The Python library matplotlib is a great tool for plotting surfaces in 3D. In this video, we are going to go through how to make a surface plot in matplotlib using the defaults and four tips on how to take that default plot and make it easier to understand and more professional. To start, let's import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and numpy as np. And we're going to need some x values and some y values in order to make this plot. So we can do that by taking this function np.arrange and giving it a starting value, an ending value, and the interval between individual points. And we'll do from negative 5 to 5, and an interval of 0 0.01 for both x and y. This gives us a one-dimensional array for both x and y, but what we actually want is a two-dimensional grid of x and y coordinate pairs, because that's what we're actually plotting. We're plotting one z value for each x and y coordinate pair. So to do that, we can use np.meshgrid. We can give it these lowercase x and y as arguments, and then output this capital X and capital Y. So np.arrange will give us this one-dimensional list of values from a starting point to an ending point, and then np.meshgrid will take those two lists and turn it into two-dimensional arrays of values for capital X and capital Y that span our entire 2D space. So we can first start out with z is equal to 1 minus x squared minus y squared. We can start making our plot using a similar method as usual for a 2D plot. We run fig and axe objects are equal to plot.subplots. But in this case, we need to give it a subplot keyword argument, and we give it projection into three dimensions. And so this will tell matplotlib to start by plotting a canvas that has a three-dimensional shape. And then in order to make our 3D plot, we use axe.plotsurface and give it x, y, and z. And we can run plot.show and see what that looks like. And here you can see our three-dimensional plot. We can click and drag to change the angle that we're looking at it to get a three-dimensional view. Okay, now it's time for tip number one, which is include a color map on your three-dimensional object. This approach can make it easier for the viewer to see the differences in Z. We can add a color map to our 3D plot using this parameter C map. We'll set it equal to Veritas first. And here's what that looks like. You can very easily tell where we are in Z based on the color as well as the shape of the plot. There are several other color maps we can use. One called Plasma looks very cool too. To find more of these color maps, we can go to Matplotlib's website. And over here you can see in this Choosing Color Maps in Matplotlib webpage, you can scroll down and find several color maps. And I would recommend using one of these perceptually uniform sequential color maps. And that means that the lightness value is increasing monotonically throughout the full range of colors. This is good for plotting sequential data, which is what we're doing in a 3D plot where we're trying to cover Z using this color map. One way to take this color map and make it more quantitative is to include a color bar. To do this, we'll go back to where we made our plot and save that as a new variable called m, and then run fig.colorbar on m and see what happens. And what we can see is we do get that color bar here, but by default it's a little too big, it's a little taller than our plot. So we can use this parameter called shrink, which will shrink it in half, and we can set the aspect ratio to whatever value we want. So we'll set it to 5, and we can give it a padding, and that's the distance from the plot. You can tune this variable depending on how far away you want your color bar to be from the rest of your plot. For tip number 2, consider removing the grid. Now grids can sometimes be useful in 2D plots when we're trying to figure out what specific value a particular point on the plot gives. However, in the 3D plot, it's really difficult to use the grid to actually learn anything about what that particular location corresponds to. And so if you can't use the grid, is it really providing any value? I think sometimes it's not. So we can set the grid to false and remove this grid from our plots. While we're at it, talking about grids and axes, we can also remove the axes if really all you care about is the shape of the plot by using this, uh, this function axe.setxticks and give it the empty list as its parameter. And so this you can do for x, y, and z. Alternatively, if we wanted to include an x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis label, we can run axe.setxlabel, set y-label, and set z-label, just like we would do in a 2D plot. Tip number three is include a contour plot either below or on the side of your plot. 
I got this idea from this interesting plot from Nature Communications where the authors used a contour plot below their three-dimensional plot to give the viewer a better idea of the three-dimensional shape of that plot. We can do this pretty simply just with one extra line of code, but before we do that we're going to change our z function to make it a little bit more complicated. So let's set our z2 to be sine of 3 times the square root of x squared plus y squared. And here you can see this sine wave growing outward in two dimensions. And just from a glance from the side view, depending on your angle, you may not know how deep those valleys go. So this is an example where a contour plot below could give your audience a little bit more information just from a glance. To make our contour plot, we use this simple function ax.contourf, that means contour fill, and we give it the same x, y, and z2 parameters that we used for the plot surface. We need to tell it which direction we're making the contour plot in, so we said z direction, and we also need to give it an offset for how far away it is from the rest of the plot, and we can also give it a color map that corresponds with the same color map we're using for our surface plot. And here you can see that contour plot showing up below our main plot. And this might help you get a slightly better idea of the amplitude of those sine waves. You probably notice though that that contour plot is sitting offset from our axes somehow. And to fix that, we can change our z limits. We can run ax.setzlim and have it include that z offset. And now that we can see the plot with that contour, hopefully this makes it a little bit easier to understand the three-dimensional shape of our object. Here's our final tip. Previously, as we've been making plots, we've been clicking and dragging to change the angle to get just the right view of whatever we're plotting. But what if you want to specify what that angle is every time you make the same plot? You can specify this programmatically using Matplotlib. And what you want to look for when you make your plot first are these two values in the lower right corner of your plot here, the elevation and the azimuth. These are two parameters that control the camera location, the angle that you're looking at your plot with. We can specify these using matplotlib using plt.gca, that means get current axis, and .azim for the azimuth value and .elev for the elevation value. When we specify these and hit run, matplotlib will start out the plot from those particular values, and we can confirm that by trying to click and drag and seeing where those values start out at. Those were our four tips on how to improve on matplotlib's defaults when plotting 3D surfaces. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.